Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. Today's topic is mixing among three strategies. I cover this in Lesson 3.6 of Game Theory 101, the complete textbook, and I'm excited to say that this is the final video of this unit. So, if you remember back a few videos ago, we first introduced this idea of a modified rock-paper-scissors game. Two videos ago, we talked about a neat little theorem that helps us solve symmetric zero-sum games just like this one. And last video, we showed that there can't be any pure strategy Nash equilibria or any mixed strategy Nash equilibria in which one player mixes between just two strategies. So that means we're now looking for the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium where each player mixes among all three strategies. Now I'm going to solve for one player's mixed strategy here. It's going to be the same process as solving for the other mixed strategy for the other player, and that's something that you can do on your own. It's just like applying the mixed strategy algorithm as we've done in the past with two strategies, except we're expanding a little bit and working with three strategies instead. So as we're solving for this mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, it'll be easier if instead of looking at rock, paper, scissors, we differentiate the names. So we're going to be looking at up, middle, and down for player one, and left, center, right for player two. Now, as we're solving for this mixed strategy, we need to define it. So what's going to happen here is we're going to let sigma left, sigma center, and sigma left, min sigma, woo, sigma one minus left minus sigma center be player two's mixed strategy. So sigma left represents the probability that player two will be playing left, in which case this is her left strategy, also known as rock. Sigma center or sigma C represents the probability that she'll play center. And because she has three strategies here, one minus sigma left minus sigma center is the probability that player two plays right or scissors. Right, So this is something that we've seen in the past, except usually it would just be one strategy. We'd call it sigma left and one minus sigma left. But because there are three strategies here, we need to have two different named strategies or two different named sigmas. And then we can let the third one just be a function of the other two because player two has to be doing something with probability one. And so whatever time she's not playing left or not playing center is the time that she's playing right. And that's what this one minus sigma left minus sigma center is. So the mixed strategy that player two is doing here needs to make player one indifferent among all three of his strategies. That's because player one is also going to mix in equilibrium. And for him to be willing to mix, remember every single strategy, every single pure strategy in the support of his mixed strategy must yield the same expected utility. So that's why we're going to be solving for player one's indifference. So we're going to find the strategy, the mixed strategy of player two that makes player one indifferent among all three of his strategies, and that will also allow him to be willing to mix in equilibrium. And we can do this just as we've done in the past with the regular mixed strategy algorithm with just two strategies. We're going to solve for this by finding player one's expected utilities as a function of that mixed strategy. So let's start out doing this now. Here again is the game, and we're going to go through this one at a time. So we're going to find player one's expected utility for up as a function of that mixed strategy. We're going to find his expected utility for middle as a function of that mixed strategy. We're going to find his expected utility for down as a function of mix his mixed strategy, or rather player two's mixed strategy. And then all of those expected utilities are going to be equal to one another. So we can use that information to then solve for the sigma left and sigma center that makes player one indifferent. And that's going to be the equilibrium strategy for player two. So let's start up here with up. What is player one's expected utility for up? Well, it's going to be a function of that mixed strategy for player two. So specifically with probability sigma left, player one will get zero. With probability sigma center, he'll get negative two. And with remaining probability or one minus sigma left minus sigma center, player one will get one. And just to be really clear about where I'm getting these numbers from, it's just like we've done in the mixed strategy or with the mixed strategy algorithm in the past. We're just looking at these numbers here and we're applying them appropriately down here. So the zero comes from here. Sigma left is just the probability that player two plays left in equilibrium. Sigma center is just the probability that player two plays center in equilibrium. And whenever that happens, player one will be getting negative two by player playing up. And finally, this probability is the probability that player two plays right, and player one gets one whenever that happens, given that he's playing up. So that is his expected utility for up. We can do a little bit of simplifying here just before we go. And so that eventually goes down to just the expected utility for up is equal to three or negative three sigma center plus one minus sigma left. So we're done with this expected utility for sigma up. We can, or rather for player one moving up as a function of sigma left and sigma center. And so now we can go on to the next pure strategy for player one, which is going to be middle. So what's his expected utility for middle? Well, 
Again, we're using the same mix strategy for player two, sigma left, sigma center, one minus sigma left minus sigma center. And so if we just take the numbers from over here and put them over there, that's what we get. So with probability sigma left, player two plays left and player one's playing middle here. So that means he'll get two in that outcome. But with probability sigma center, she'll play center and player two, or rather player one, given the fact that he's playing middle, will get zero. And again, lastly, if player two plays right, which occurs with probability one minus sigma left minus sigma center, player one gets negative one because he's playing middle. So as you're seeing, as we go along here, this is very, very similar to what we've done with the mixed strategy algorithm in the past. It's just we're adding an extra couple of terms over here because there are three different strategies we have to consider. It's not just two, it's one, two, and three. But it's just the same process. So that is what we do, or that's what we get when we solve for that. And eventually we get to the expected utility of middle being worth three times sigma left minus one plus sigma center. Now we have just one last strategy for player one here. We have to figure out his expected utility for down, and we get this. So again, the numbers are coming straight forward. So with probability sigma left, player one playing down will get negative one. With probability sigma center, player two plays center, and because player one is playing down, he'll get one for that, that payoff right there. And then lastly, with probability one minus sigma left minus sigma center, player two will play right in her mixed strategy. And player one, given the fact that he's playing down, will get zero as a result. And this actually becomes really simplified. It's just expected utility for down is negative sigma left plus sigma center. So we are good to go now. We can solve for sigma left and sigma center. How do we do that? Well. Player one has to be indifferent among all three of his strategies. So we know that the expected utility for up is equal to the expected utility for middle, and that is equal to the expected utility for down. And so we can just use these equations here to solve for sigma center and sigma left. It's really easy. So here's how we're going to do that. We just got to find the appropriate equations to create a system of equations that's really useful for us, knowing the fact that this is equal to this, this is equal to this, and this is equal to that. So let's start out by just looking at sigma... Uh, rather, the expected utility for middle and the expected utility for down, we can set these two things equal to one another because that's given up here. Remember, player one has to be indifferent between playing middle and playing down, and that's what's defining his indifference. So we can solve for this. And if we do a little bit of work, you'll notice that the sigma centers cancel out very quickly, and we're just left with four sigma left is equal to one, and so sigma left is equal to one fourth. So in equilibrium, player two is going to play sigma left, or rather he's going to play the strategy left or rock before we change the names with probability one fourth. And so that just leaves us with sigma center that we need to solve for. And if we look at the expected utility for up and the expected utility for down, remember those two things are equal to each other. So we can set them equal to each other here. And now we just have to solve for sigma center. You'll notice that there's a negative sigma left on both sides here, so that drops out. And we're left with one is equal to four times sigma center. And so sigma center is just equal to one fourth. So that means player two will be playing center or paper with probability one fourth. And of course, she'll have to play right or scissors with the remaining probability. So one minus one fourth for sigma left and minus one fourth for sigma center is equal to one half. So that means she'll be playing scissors with probability one half. And again, this is going to be the exact same thing for player one. I'm going to leave that to you to do on your own. But once you've done that, we have our mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. Player two plays rock with probability one fourth, paper with probability one fourth, and scissors with probability one half. Player one does the exact same thing, rock with probability one fourth, paper with probability one fourth, and scissors with probability one half. What's really interesting to note here is that we only change the payoffs for the paper rock outcome. So that's what's going on is, well, paper is really attractive when your opponent's playing rock, and similarly, rock is really unattractive when your, play or when your opponent is playing paper. And yet what's really going on here is that this is affecting the probability that you play scissors more frequently. And the reason that you want to play scissors more frequently here is because paper looks so attractive, you have to do something to cancel out the attractiveness of playing paper. And the way you do that is by playing scissors, since scissors is what beats paper. If paper were to be played really, really frequently, as some people might expect ahead of time, because paper looks so, more, so much more attractive here, well, if that were the case, if players are playing paper really frequently, then that incentivizes you to play scissors really frequently. And so that's why the scissors, again, is being played with higher probability than paper or rock here. And that's because you need something to decentivize paper from being played.
All right, so we have found the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium for this particular modification of rock, paper, scissors in the textbook in lesson 3.6. I actually solve for this in a general way using variables instead of numbers. And so you can get a really clearer picture of what goes on in rock, paper, scissors based off of that. But outside of that, we are officially done with this unit. So I hope you enjoyed this unit and I will see you in the next video. Take care.